and welcome to the traditional undisclosed location. This is Tanky, and I can't sleep today, so... Or, tonight, so... Oh, Rogue Trader it is. Um... Okay. Um, when last we left off, uh... We'd actually found our capital world, and they had something to do for us, and our ship's computer may be an abominable intelligence, sorry, cogitator since this is Warhammer, and anyway, Amelia has to do stuff. I'm gonna stream until, like... I feel like I can actually sleep, so... Oh, um... I'm gonna try and keep this short, but... I'm streaming after midnight. Well after midnight, like 12.52 where I am, so... I don't know if sleep is something that's going... to be for me. I hope I can get to sleep. Lame red hair. What's going on? Who do we know who has flame red hair? Question to me not long ago, Ellen Talk, and now I'm here to present you with my answer. With fluid grace, your only emerges from the shadows of the Captain's Bridge. Her face seems to glow under her volumen light, her expression more pensive. Unusual. We talked about how we each see the world in our own way, and we're eager to know how Eldari see the world. Do you still wish to hear the answer? Unless we Listen closely my, to my answer, Ellen Talk. You may struggle to comprehend what is to be said, being accustomed to reveling in your own might and skewing the world to suit yourself. Pitch your understanding not toward my words, but the sense that lies hidden in the shade of their sounds. 
Juliet half closes her eyes, her words unfurling slowly and melodically. You tried to split the world into pieces, to fragment it, into dark, into light and dark, truth and lies, self and other. But I see the world as a single whole, and in this lies its simplicity and complexity. It's not enough to simply see the world and hear its voices. You must understand it. Ah. Think of the Lilithan, the world on which our paths cross. What is it truly? What it is its essence? The Lilithan's magnificence comes from the green of its vast forests, not from the green of its vast, its vast forests or the depths of its waters. Its beauty is in the world, and the way it dances on the tongue. It's in the word, the way it dances on the tongue. And even you, Alan Tuck, can sense it. Try it. Say the word slowly, delicately, cast inside all stray thoughts. Feel, perhaps then you won't see. If the world around you fades, and your perception instantly narrows, coming to a single point of focus on the tip of your tongue, Bleh. Bleh. your tongue delicately tickles the roof of your mouth. Bleh. 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 And the sounds and sips, slips along your throat with incredible silkiness, warming as it goes like a fresh sip of fresh recap. Lay, the tip of your tongue touches the same place again, and the air softly rushes from your chest. The sound like the susurration of leaves as the wind leaves root in the forest canopy. Fan. Your tongue taps your front teeth, and a gentle vibration spreads through your body, sending a shiver along your spine. Your words are sincere, Ellen Talk, and you are capable of seeing more than you, than you do now. Instead of the lifeless clamor of monstrous mechanisms, the roar of engines, and the discordant voices of your followers, I hear and attend to silence. It arises in moments of spiritual serenity, and in that stillness we become witnesses to the transformations of our own inner world. Monkai lives passed so swiftly, and rushed through them for the sake of a chosen goal, but thoughts of transience and loss frighten you, and so you drive such thoughts away and drown yourselves in the daily tumult. But it is from the fleeting moments which are which enter our lives and quickly vanish from them, in fact the soul's fortress grows, a moment's blooming, an hour's is wilting, the splendor of each lies in its ephemerality. Yeah, I don't think that's me. <laughs> I'm up at 1259 streaming <laughs> and because I can't sleep so too those memories of, so too the memories of those who have left our side and no longer walk the path with us and in you Alan Talk, I see more than just another Bankai your true essence lies in your will which is capable of changing the world around you and within you it lies in your ability to create and understand your creation and in your ability to destroy. It lies in what your kin's mind cannot grasp, what their primitive sight cannot behold, but I can see it. I am but speaking truth, Alan Talk. However, I ask you not to make a typical mis mistake typical of your kind. My words contain no insinuation or nor any call for you to act. Your soul shines brightly in this world. I see you, and this will never change. That is all. And what do you make of it, Alan Talk? How do you see the world? that mean?
you not fall into line with your thoughts, Alan Top. Every form, color, creature, and being possesses its own charm and capacity to stir our emotions. Millions of stars with darkness. The inability to avoid crystals. Let her up. Oh, I can follow your line of thought. A plethora of intelligent and primitive life forms that inhabit the galaxy. The world manifests itself in endless diversity, in fact, and in fact lies true magnificence. In fact, we have shared our truth about this world. I would like to know if your thoughts about me align with those of your kind, Alan Tuck, or if you see me differently. is probably more in character. It seems that there are many facets of your soul that I had not considered, Ellen Todd. Interesting. I accept your answer and thank you for speaking with me. This is my first conversation on board this vessel that has truly brought serenity and joy to my soul. Captain. A noble aspiration, Lord Captain. I, as you wish, Lord Captain. Lord Captain. To what do I owe this visit? The Lord Inquisitor was most insistent that I master the discipline of Santic Demonology. I use my faith and my power to crush the enemies of the Imperium. Mm. Servants of Chaos tremble at the sound of the Emperor's name uttered by my lips. I am also a skilled biomancer. I can manipulate bodily processes. Sometimes... Sometimes I resort to those skills in the course of my work when it is necessary to make the subject of an interrogation more cooperative. Since the day of my initiation as an acolyte, so decades, how many real years it's been, it's hard to say. When I return from a journey through the warp, I often discover that much more or much less time has passed in real space. The first step for biomancers such as myself is to take control of the processes of their own body, including aging. <laughs> I've endured innumerable hazards in my work. If I allowed every trace of them to remain, I would look completely different today. Hmm. You can't really be expecting me to answer that question, can you? Gladly. An identified object has been located in the system. The artifact reacts to our transmission by releasing unknown radiation, most likely of Xeno origin. The cogs are reporting. If you want a closer look, we need to close the distance between the vessel and the object. Giant. Hmm. 
Ash world. First, it looked like the snowy and desolate planet was devoid of surprises, but the yellow, orange, and the yellow and orange flickering of the lumens and the notifications from the auger system informed the officers that there was a small colony that survived in spite of the high, harsh climactic con conditions. All attempts to hail the colony have failed. The explorers report the dismal condition of the settlement and its inhabitants. Their skin is translucent and pale, their icy blue eyes see practically no color. Their language is rough and guttural, and their stomachs cannot tolerate anything except the stew made from the local roots and mosses. And yet they are subjects of the Imperium, still loyal to the Emperor. They have mistaken their people for his emissaries. The local elders woefully reminisced about times long ago. Most of them were still sheltered in their mother's wombs when the the snow first settled on the verdant fields. Ha hail ruined crops and frost hardened the soil. Plants and large beasts that could not sustain themselves were the first to go. They soon were soon followed by birds and other small animals. Most people in the large cities perished, unable to warm themselves and their families. They say the governor and his entourage left the world in the first days of winter, taking all the, all the precision, provisions and fuel with them. No one responded to the pleas from this dying world. The stars remained deaf to the messages transmitted by the planet's Vox stations. These abandoned subjects of the Imperium still managed to save the machines and other valuables, but they are little use without a supply of Prometheum. And yet those who survived eventually apt, adapted to the tribulations that the God Emperor had bestowed upon them. When the maw of the first generator belched forth a furious roar and black ash started falling from the sky instead of snow, the locals laughed and danced, trying to warm their limbs after decades of cold. They called down blessings upon their unseen savior, a rogue traitor from the Von Valencius dynasty, and thanked the god emperor for the fortuitous encounter. The explorer's departure was accompanied by shouts of grateful approval, not to mention their many parting gifts. Look out, bridge, we have an unknown object dead ahead, not an asteroid, clearly artificial in nature. Or, but it's larger than Footfall Station. Bridge, copy that. Report to relay to officer on duty and pilots. Look out. Expect visual soon. We have visual. What the? Bridge, look out. This is the Vox Master. I'm adding the pilot's senior officers and Lord Captain to this channel. Her ladyship wishes to assume personal command. Look out. Lord Captain, we have requested intel on the, the object. Officer Station. Ben Kalix here. And what we see before us is a webway gate, an artifact that Xenos used to get to their sorceress realm, so to speak. It allows Eldari to get around the sector quickly and serves as a hideout for her for more and her, her most unpleasant tribe, the Drukari, of whom, whom we have already met. Officer Station. Nearly it here. The gate is just like the one you saw in Leliathan. Children of Yasurion wander the void through such constructs, erected in ancient times. Any ship that passes through such a portal will enter a tangle of paths fathomable fathom to none but my kin. Bridge. According to available data, the object consists of an unknown material foreign to the Imperium. We are registering an un... It shouldn't be foreign. You've dealt with the Eldari before. 
We are registering an unknown class of energy profile. The engineers are at a loss about how this technology works, but they did specify that the energy energometry suggests that the system is holding an active charge. Um, the object appears ready to do whatever it's designed to do. Bridge. Requesting response from the Engineerium. Bridge. Apologies, Lord Captain. The tech priests have refused to even consider such a possibility. It would be a violation of the Omnisized tenets and an extremely dangerous undertaking. Bridge. Perhaps a certain... Okay. Maybe when apparently it likes me more. Lord Captain, we have received an astropathic message from Regent Aranto or Celio. The navigators are concerned about the fate of Cassia, who disappeared from Urak 5. The Regent is requesting an update on her current status and has, has also inquired about the possibility of a personal meeting to negotiate and arrange for the return of the Lady Navigator to her helms. The psycho-emotional coding of the received message portrays acute concern, but it also contains something that the astropaths have failed to put into words. If you'll excuse my forthrightness, I feel it is necessary to help House Orsilio the truth. Otherwise, a conflict with the Navis Noble Elite is possible, which, given the current state of the Coronis Expanse, will only play into the hands of the enemies of the Imperium. I'll see to it, Lord Captain. The astropaths will transmit your co consent. Rep representatives of House Orsilia will be waiting for you on the capital world of Dargonis. Receiving members of Navis Nobili is always a delicate matter. Please make sure to discuss the details of this meeting with your Chancellor upon arrival. I did Emporium.
Okay. Start here and go clockwise, I think. Do the space battle last. Charred ruins have been detected on mm, the planet's surface. The architecture, buildings, materials, layouts, and passages betray their Xeno's origin. There are currently no signs of Xeno activity on the planet, and the ruins seem to be abandoned. Tekis succeeded. The burnt husk of an Imperial shuttle has been found in the heart of the ruins. The pilot's remains are badly damaged. It would seem that the shuttle will smash into the building at full speed, causing the fire that destroyed it. Interesting. Close examination. What? And reveal most precious few architect items. Unfortunately, removing them destroys the pilot's remains. White shards of bone are now scattered among the burned out ruins. A vigilant member of the Augur crew had detected small Xenos vessel drifting through the void. The ship is unpowered and shows no sign of being crewed. The squad boarded the vessel without issue. Corrosion has laid waste to the ship's systems, which led to the death of the entire crew. The interior is full of Eldari corpses. No weapons were found on board, and the dead Xenos, judging by their clothing, were not part of any warrior caste, and merely the crew of the now defunct ship. Xenos nearly claims to have recognized the symbols on the dead under Altari's clothes. They were civilian refugees from Craft World Krudarik. This void ship will not be defeated.
interesting. Another salvo! Not what I meant to do. Time. 
this seems like it's going to be bad for me. Interesting.
Okay, so it should die next turn, I think. Now, let's see where... I think we did everything we can do in there apart putting down an Abstractium. I think I'm missing something there. Yes, I missed something.
Hmm. Yeah, this point of interest seems good. I meant to give, meant to give her, um,
That seems very good, considering how often he has temporary wounds. So I'm not sure what I have to do for finding the ship, so...
Now let's see if I can keep Cassia as my, um, my navigator. me to report the esteemed navigators of House Orcelio have taken residence in the guest estate and wait a meeting with you. How would you like to receive them? I would like to keep Cassia. Regent Aranto Orsinio, esteemed delegation, the rogue trader, or in Fontalencia's protectorate, welcome you. Come this way, please. Esteemed representatives of the Navis Noble Elite have arrived at the Rogue Traders' Court, the Regent of the Great House Orsilio, Aranto Orsilio. His companions, Lady Bunch of Orsilios. Regent Toronto, a tall, wise, and old man, proudly stares at you with monkey, unblinking eyes. Loose skin sways with his every move, as if the navigator's flesh has detached from his bones. An unsightly hole mars the regent's face where his nose should be. The old man's skull is covered with spiky growths. Rogue traitor, the regent's piercing voice cuts through the silence. On behalf of House Orsilio, we would like to express our immense satisfaction at this meeting, and our gratitude for the warm welcome. It pleases us to know that there are still ladies in the Corona's expanse who observe etiquette and the traditions of hospitality. And yet this is not why we are here. Our grace is obliged to note how much rogue, the rogue trader has done for Orsilio, by protecting its beloved child. We waited many turns to behold her radiant visage. Come now, child, there is much we need to discuss. Hmm.
I think number two. I suppose we can tolerate that. After all, it was you who rescued the child. If So, tell us, what exactly happened on your Act 5? In that case, House Orcilio is deeply indebted to the rogue trader. We are willing to reciprocate such a magnanimous gesture. We trust that a treaty of friendship and alliance underpinned by the transfer of several artifacts of exceeding rarity will suffice. Now come, child, it is time we departed for your new home, so that we may finish what we started. Unthinkable. Don't shoot! House Orcelio was not involved in the attack! Why the hell does everything have to go wrong? I shall not fear. Nothing I can't do. Not a problem for me. All too easy. Suits my purposes. Watch and learn. Everyone, step aside. For the throne's glory. Naturally. Oh. 
I won't object to it. I must not falter. Moving out. I have read tomes of military tactics. I am a navigator, not a servant. My place is at the fall. It will be done. Indeed. Okay. At your beck and call. Victory is imminent. Follow my lead. Uh, weather the storm. My faith strengthens me. I'll put my psychic abilities to use. Let's see to it. Alas, no. The Emperor is on our side. I won't object to it. 
for the throne. Nice, nice, nice. Follow my lead. I must not falter. Duty prevails. Moving out. Tried and tested tactics are the best ones. At your back and call. It will be done. I must not falter. I can't do. Oh, 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 oh. I do have a grenade. Not to my specialty. without deeds is worthless. This is unacceptable. Doubt is for the weak. Nice. I need a foothold. I won't object to it. Be gone, I'm a man. Oh. Someone's death wish is mine to grant. Get me a target. Naturally. But of course, Lord Captain. I won't object. The Inquisition sends their regards. Your reckoning is due. Navigator is coming.
None shall stand in my way. Claim to the stars. I, I don't think they... No, they wouldn't go this way, right? This one fast. Okay. Victory awaits. I won't heed your cries of mercy. None of you shall survive. Never wavered in the face of adversity. Already done. <laughs> Guided by faith. Put my psychic abilities to use. On what? Follow my lead. Follow my lead. Job for the serfs. If I may. a job for the serfs for the throne's glory i'm not accustomed to being ordered around i must not falter I'm enraged! Moving out! Onward! 
much. Stay vigilant. I will do my duty. Victory is imminent. It will be done. <laughs> At your beck and call. Follow my lead. Really go down easy. Nothing I can't do. As the Emperor commands, I act. I'll do it. Let's see to it. I won't object to it. Naturally. Follow my lead. Oh, damn. Me, if you insist, Lord Captain. Will be done. Do, 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 do. 
Indeed. I will do my duty. Nice, 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 nice. Activate calculated fury algorithm. I venerate you, machine spirits. Where to hide? In thy light I stand, and thy light I crave. I will not. As the Emperor commands, I act. Faith without deeds is worthless. Doubt is for the weak. None can escape the Emperor's judgment. Let's see to it. Everyone, step aside. I won't object to it. But of course, Lord. That was clever, I think. Using the veil, uh, using Let's the um, see to it. charge of me. to my lead. get out of, of the free attack and to where I wanted. My navigator, you friggin' moron. Follow my lead. A tactically sound approach. Someone else can do this. At your beck and call. Explore does no one route forward. Fuck. Suits my purposes. Nothing I can't do. The Emperor commands, I act.
Nice. I won't object to it. Let's see to it. Naturally. Oh. It's stay vigilant. Weather the storm. Be gone. <laughs> Follow my lead. I will endure. And his will made manifest. Faith without deep. I'll do it. Doubt is for the weak. I refuse. Damn. Follow my lead. Where is she?
A new challenge for me. Mercy, the late ah, there, the lady navigator covers her disfigured scaly hands. Covers her face with her disfigured scaly hands, each with an extra finger and conjoined phalangeal bones. Her clothes are covered in blood, mostly that of your servants, and several unexploded bolts are sticking out of her chest plate. Rogue trader, whether on purpose or out of ignorance, you are harboring a monster that is cunningly pretending to be an in innocent maid. Spare me, and I, Alina Hat. Area or Celia will swear to tell you the whole truth about the madness that is devouring horse house or Celia like a malignant tumor. Do not let the regent deceive you with honeyed lies, but the cursed child and lest the cursed child ruin your protectorate as well. Okay, what does she have to tell me about Cassia? The unnaturally bulbous eyes of the navigator constantly shift between you and Cassia. Black secretions run down her cheeks and serve tears, leaving unsightly tracks. I, Alina. Ha Ateria of House Orsilio, swear to tell the rogue trader nothing but the truth. May the god emperor be my witness. Pathetic. Silence. With all due respect, House Orsilio has hardly covered in itself in glory thus far today. It is time for representatives its representatives answered before the rogue trader. Rogue trader, House Orsilio humbly asks for your lenience and forgiveness. We could not even imagine these vile rats could be scurrying among our ranks. As for them sneaking into the rogue trader's palace and staging an unthinkable crime, God Emperor be our witness. The accursed renegade seek to spark a feud between our houses. We are ready to tell you what everything we know so this misunderstanding can be remedied as quickly as possible. They are madmen who seek to destroy centuries-old traditions of our great house, so carefully nurtured by the previous innovator, Ernestifone Orsilio. They deem the century of her rule a tyranny and her most sacred relic a curse that must be destroyed. Fools, if the Atlas were to be destroyed, the whole house Orsilio would follow it into oblivion. They dread its power, for only a novator can fully grasp the mysteries and harness the power er, of the Starway Atlas. What the renegades call a leash, we call a guiding star. Everyone in the house knows the child is the keeper of the one true Starway Atlas, which once belonged to our great novator Tisiphone Orsilio. The ungrateful wretches secretly hated her grace, and when Tisiphone abdicated her responsibilities and set off for parts unknown, they staged a revolt to destroy her successor. We believe it with all our heart, the novator spent many cycles on the world where the child was born. It is said that everyone who witnessed the miracle of her birth simultaneously departed for a destination no more only to the Novator. Tisphone gave the order and followed them soon after, leaving her precious gift, the Atlas, to Cassia, and therefore marking her as her successor. The Regent stays silent and then replies, To call your statement false would be a lie. For many years we managed to maintain a fragile balance within our houses, but then the Novator's departure shook, up, shook the faith of many. Treasury is empty, the navigators are scattered, the warp routes are scrambled, and many of our allies cannot be reached, which is why it is so important to complete the child's education. It is Cassia's duty to take Tisiphone's place and re lead the house to prosperity. Such is her great destiny. 
a special gift for a special child. She was born with it and grew up under its influence. The instability sometimes hampered her education, but we learned to prevent most outbursts. As long as the child remains calm and remains in seclusion, the powers cannot take a hold of her, her mind. I do not know what it's, it is you wish to learn, but I will start from the very beginning. A long time ago, Tissaphone ascended to the throne of Orsilio. She was a daring navigator who brought part of the house to the expanse, hoping to strengthen our position in the Imperium. The house prospered, but Tissaphone was never satisfied. She went mad in her pursuit of power, seeking more influence, more control, and she saw enemies everywhere, even among her loyal followers. And paranoia was slowly driving Tissaphone insane. And one day she's created the Starway Atlas, a relic that is implanted in our bodies at birth, a noose around our necks, our gift and our dam damnation. Tissaphone used the Atlas to control us, subdue our will, and mold our thoughts. If anyone put a toe out of line, she killed him with a glance. At first, many branches of House Orsilio tried to resist her tyranny, and Tissaphone cut them down with extreme brutality. For example, the entire set. At Fala Branch was destroyed simply because its leaders asked too many questions about the Atlas and wanted to know the truth about its creation. Tisphone's madness weakened the dynasty, and not long ago the Novator vanished. Indeed, her loyal followers fought when they say she owes to retire. The truth is that nobody knows the truth. I hope she is rotting away on one of her secret worlds. Tissaphone passed her atlas on to her successor before fleeing the house. To a newborn child, we could not surrender the throne to the tyrant's creature. Tissaphone was cunning and treacherous. She must have hatched the entire plan beforehand. Her disappearance, the child, the transfer of the leash. We feared that one day she would be reborn in Cassia's body, and we could not let that happen. Largely, yes, but there is more. Have you never felt pure, unadulterated disgust while standing close to her? Or perhaps fury or fear? Who but a monster would manipulate the minds and feelings of others? Even more or so than Tissaphone herself did. Tissaphone always had plenty of opponents, but we were afraid to trust one another. Any, one, any of us could be spying for her followers. We saved our strength and dealt the first blow five years after the heir was born, striking at one of the estates on Irtavi. But the girl survived, and Regent Aranto hid her so far away and guarded her so firmly that it took us another thirteen years to find her. And then another two to get into the Regent's good graces and reach Yurak V. Now Cassia is in the spotlight and the House Council is about to put her on the throne. Surely there is no better time to cut off the Serpent's head. Regent Aranto is guilty of mass killings, intimidation, and human torture, abetting Tissaphone and raising her, her heir. Her crimes are many, but this one is not among them. I'd love to see his head on the chopping block, but honor prohibits me from slandering him in a trial before the rogue traitor. I think I am ill-prepared to make a judgment of this kind. I am sure the rogue trader knows what to do better than I.
and kindly light glints in Cassie's eyes. Very well, considering the circumstances, I will use the power. We are loath to flout the laws of honor, but having you as an adversary is something we would enjoy even less. For the sake of neutrality between our dynasties, we agree to your terms. There's still... There's a pregnant pause. The regent stares at you as if trying to peer through the skin, muscle, and bone and see the darkest corners of your heart. You are not wrong, rogue trader. If you are willing to take care of a child while we deal with our problems, so be it. And now we must bid you farewell. Regent Aranto gives Cassie one final look and then, with a trembling hand, directs the servants to head towards the exit. Wait, the corpses were moving? <laughs> the corpses were just. <laughs> Well, that was a very convenient thing. Those assassins really helped me keep my navigator. You know what? I'm going to talk to, um, Cassia. And I should probably end the stream, I guess, but I don't want to, like, want to keep playing. <laughs> Fuck. you have come. I admit I was seeking you out myself. After the events on Dargonus, 
It felt like an anthracite gray mantle had dropped on my shoulders. I spent a long time thinking about our very first meeting and what happened next. I cannot wait to shake off this dreary color. Mm. You are the only one who I trust to hear this confession. The thought of being Nova Tour both frightens and sickens me. How can I manage an entire house if I cannot even control my powers? I... I am just grateful to you for always being close and guiding me to the right path. Thank you, Rogue Trader. It will be an honor to keep guiding your vessel through the Sea of Souls until you decide otherwise. On the contrary, Lord Captain, the mere thought of what happened tightens a gray-blue slip noose around my throat. To realize, again and again, how fervently your subjects hate you. I am sorry, Lord Captain. I should not have darkened your colors with my own struggles. Mm. She... I would never reveal this secret to an outsider, but you, you have come to my aid more than once already. The Starway Atlas is a sacred artifact of House Orcelio. It helps our navigators chart a course through the warp. This crystal, I mean, the Atlas, has been inside me for as long as I can remember, giving me strength. But the others... I noticed the renegades in the palace were choked by ashen ghosts of despair when we met face to face. I swear the ghosts were reaching for their atlases. Yeah, this is all interesting. But my atlas is much more powerful than the others. It's the atlas of Tisiphone herself. Tisiphone. That is what people have whispered behind my back my whole life, although no one knew for certain. But I... I always suspected. I simply did not wish to admit it to myself. Mm. When the dark blue ice of my soul made Felek's heart stop on Urak 5, I instantly knew. And by then, there was no sense in lying to myself. Certain navigators in my house have tried to kill me more than once. But the tales of Tisiphone's brutality... I am beginning to wonder... What if they are all true? What if I will be a new tormentor to those who serve me? That's a very good question. I thank fate for giving me a friend with whom I can share my thoughts. Thank you for listening. <laughs> As the only voice of our family on this vessel, it is an honor. As long as your questions are courteous, I will answer every one of them. You are shrewd indeed. My ancestor charted that route while fleeing the enemies of humanity. They say the Emperor himself was his guide, because the warp expelled their vessel without a single loss. Unfortunately, the lips of those who relate this tale seep with disgusting green hubris. I think Kaleen Orcelio was simply a skilled navigator. By all means. I have enjoyed your company. And now Argenta, because she's here. Lord Captain, your presence is welcome. And I wish to apologize for my prior coldness. After our first meeting, I was concerned that he would turn out to be another faithless offshoot of the Von Valancius dynasty, like... like the traitor Conrad. But now I see before me a worthy leader and servant of the Imperium. I am glad to accompany you in your endeavors. Of course, my mission is all I can think about. Gladly, listen. Long ago, there was a blessed world. Thousands of stars covered the sky there, so bright that its denizens hardly knew the darkness of night. Thousands of rivers nurtured the soil. 
Thousands of gardens bloomed every spring, and at every moment, thousands of prayers were flying into the clear air, thanking and praising the Emperor. But one day, the people learned the meaning of darkness. Like a storm, accursed heretics who had sold themselves to the archenemy descended upon the planet. Shells flew from the sky that desolated whole cities and burned the gardens and filled the riverbeds with the blood of the faithful. Smoke and soot swallowed the skies and the thousand stars that had once shone over the world. Among the handful of survivors was one orphan who had watched all her family die and the garden she'd grown up in burn to ash. But in her heart, she knew the absolute truth. Just these three words. The Emperor protects. And knowing that, she never looked away from the black, terrifying, smoke-covered sky. There were no more bright stars to be seen. Except for one. The one star. The bright star. The silver star shone in the sky, and when the orphan smiled at it, the one star fell right into her hands. All the faithful in every corner of the continent who saw the trail of the falling star recognized it as an omen and went looking for the place where it landed, and they rallied together, and with the light of the one star they found their salvation. Yes, that was the beginning of her hagiography. It is known that she lived on a world where heretics staged a terrible insurrection. They wiped out all life on the planet, except those whom Saint Argenta managed to save with the One Star, and with the strength of her faith. After that, she traveled between worlds gripped by turmoil on her ship marked with a silver star, and brought hope to the faithful. Numerous accounts confirm this. Her coming helped people turn the tide of the war and wipe away corruption before the Imperium's main forces even arrive. Millions of people owed their lives to her, but the heretics, having realized their imminent defeat, sent the remnants of their forces after the ship with the Silver Star. It fell from the skies onto an obscure world. There are no definitive records of how old Argenta was at the time. In some chronicles, she's even called the Child Saint, but their credibility is questionable. Either way, she didn't live long, but she left a bright trail in her wake, like a falling star. To find the way to the planet called Salis Prime, Saint Argenta is my patroness, and that is where her fallen ship is. And it must also be the resting place of her great relic, the One Star. It is the One Star, <laughs> if I yeah. I only knew. Neither the hagiography nor the legends give a straight answer. Classical iconographers believed that the star turned into a banner woven from silver thread, which, when brought onto the battlefield, would shed light that blinded only heretics, but did no harm to the faithful. Most of them portrayed Saint Argenta as a girl carrying this banner. Others think that upon falling from the sky, the One Star became a holy chainsword, which Argenta later used to strike down monsters and enemies of the Imperium. In some of the earlier engravings, Argenta is depicted wearing power armor with a silver star on her chest. One theological theory suggests that this armor was, in fact, the relic. Some even think that the One Star is actually the ship on which Argenta traveled. I feel that my undertaking will be fulfilled when I find the answer that has eluded the Ecclesiarchy for millennia. I pray we find the way to Salus Prime soon. The ruinous powers must be aligned against us. They stand in the way of faith. One day we will reach Salus Prime and stand before the gates of Saint Argenta's ship. I know it. I believe. 
If such is the rogue trader's wish, although there isn't much I can tell, I am the Emperor's daughter and his servant. <laughs> what else? Now that hey, I where can does she tell come you, from? I come from everywhere and nowhere. I... I am the child of officers of the Imperial Guard. Yeah, I was but... born in the hold of a warship. Grew up following That's my parents' deployments works, from, from one what I planet to another, and lost my family in the flames of a righteous war. My memory is like wafts of smoke over a still battlefield. The gray of a ship's plating, the strict cadence of life in military camps. My mother's uniform, I loved looking at it. Then, the rumbling, the shouting, and the soot. The screams of soldiers burning alive. And the gold of the regiment's Aquila. Untouched by soot or blood. The last unsullied piece I of the world I wonder if these are real mad. memories or her, you know making things more grand in her own mind or more sinister and more typical of the Imperium false memories that was my last memory of my mother and of my former life before the Scholar Progenium and the Novitiate before my trials before the vows my own relic it's the regiment's Aquila or rather the fragment that survived the attack, the explosions, and the fire. For me, it's a reminder that purity and radiance can be preserved, even in the heart of darkness. Become. <laughs> it's such a strange word for it. It seems right, but is that how one talks about their destiny? If you're asking about the path itself, that's easy enough to answer. First, like many other orphans, I endured the Scholar Progenium. Those years were rough, but I remember the hardship fondly. Few things can compare with the feeling of satisfaction from a past trial, even if it leaves your body aching from exhaustion or your soul wincing in pain. I was one of the best among my peers, and I was selected for the novitiate in the ranks of the Adeptus Aurorisus. When the hour came, I passed the trials and took my vows. <sighs> the most joyous day of my life. The Emperor's light has always been with me. But to accept it with all see your heart, I can convert her to, chaos. to utter the oaths, <sighs> that is a rapture like no other. Have I ever... B but that would be shameful weakness, almost heresy. Of course not. I was born for this. I live by the Emperor's will and in his light. I myself am the light. I must be the light for myself and for those who ask for my protection. I was chosen to serve. But beyond that, I won't deny it. Few things elate me as much as the thought that the heretic felled by my shot will never again orphan a child. It is my pleasure to be candid. What do I owe this visit? <laughs> of course not. The Lord Inquisitor's entourage comprises dozens of people. The best of the best. Experts in various fields and disciplines. Some of them I know personally. Others I have never met. 
To be honest, I'm not even certain that the people I know are still alive. I used to work with other acolytes of the Lord Inquisitor, but in the Coronas Expanse, I have been working alone. I... <laughs> had never even considered such a thing before you asked. Hmm. Perhaps I do. Sometimes. Perhaps. When we both find a suitable time. <laughs> we are not a retinue. We are acolytes. As for your question, I am closer than anyone else to the one I call my personal teacher. The Lord Inquisitor deemed me worthy of undertaking the most important and sensitive tasks requiring the attention of agents of the Golden Throne. Such as? Ship's augers have detected a non-native mineral cluster on the planet's surface, probably the remains of an ancient asteroid shower. The substance is valuable, but collecting it will not be easy. The asteroid sits right above numerous underground caverns. The ancient tunnels and vaults are incredibly unstable and would likely not bear the weight of a large group of humans, let alone a shuttle. The crew's expertise made it possible to collect the mineral without disturbing the ancient caverns. Vessels, bulkheads, will hold strong. Fire the lance, back. Another salvo.
They pale before our mastery of the void. Lord Captain, we have cross-referenced the key ch er characteristics of the system with our astronautical data. Planet Phaebos 6 is located here. The problem is the augurs detect an unusual change in the atmosphere, not unlike a massive release of toxins. It appears that something unfortunate has happened to planet's underground storage facilities. It is impossible to land safely on the planet just now. Unknown ships are cruising in the system. Hmm. No need for any cog to analyze it. I can decipher this telemetry easy. Zenith. Uh, so armory and artillery crews are standing by. Planet can barely sustain life, and yet Search has discovered a long-lost Imperial colony, one that was cut off from the rest of the galaxy centuries ago. The colonists live in conditions worse than any underhive, yet still they venerate the Emperor and gladly welcome their visitors. Lord and Captain receives an invitation from the local ruler, the Archqueen Princeps Domina. Princeps? As in Titan Princeps? The rulers meet the Lord Captain in a shack, considered to be a palace by the people here. And the Archqueen's unusual crown is made out of metal and oils, I'm mostly, most likely the parts of an ancient device used for boiling water. The guests are served the finest delicacies the colony can provide. The Archqueen praises the visitors in mangled low gothic and calls the Lord Captain her dear sister. At the end of the audience, gifts are presented to the guests. The Archqueen's minister delicately remarks that the best possible gift the Lord C P Captain and her crew could provide would be some the replenishment of the colony's meager gene pool. The Archqueen is delighted and flattered. She hopes the Lord Captain will pay her more visits in the future.
Finally! Some real action! the course. This one's going down. The time has come. Defenses. Macro cannon, Tommy. Nobody survives battle with this void ship. Fire the lance back! Leave their hull through the front of the sky. Nice. was. Swift and merciless retribution is a proper fate for many transgressors, but the Imperium permits using the convicts for 
her hard labor or on distant prison worlds like Vebo's six, to atone for their crimes before humankind, hundreds of thousands of rogues and lowlifes toil in the mines of the Von Valencia's protectorate until death from exhaustion or some other unfortunate accident claims her forsaken souls. Six always was a penal world, but this, even the miscreants of this place do not deserve such a fate. Oh, that's corruption. And Claude had his throat right before he died. Caustic ooze gives off a sickening vapor that eats away at the lining of your nose and mouth, making your eyes water. The broken, slashed, and gutted body is still covered with the shreds of a planetary warden uniform. The man's body is frozen in an unnatural pose. The corpse's fingers are crooked and its teeth are barred in a ghastly grimace. You know what? I really need to go to bed. I'm going to try and go to bed. Until next time, have fun. Take care of your, each other out there. Goodbye.